welcome to Guitar Knobs, the Guitars, Gear, Noise, and Nonsense podcast, hosted today by these knobs. Jared Brandon. Me, Todd Novak, and we've got a special guest. John Lasco. He is a local guitar, uh, can I call you a guitar god yeah, around yeah, here? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, you call me a guitarist. I yes, like. <laughs> he's, a, he's a prominent uh, guitarist, uh, mm. and... To be completely honest, his uh, he, he's, uh, his daughter yeah. uh, lives right next door to me, uh, yeah. and one day they came over and they said, hey, hey, my, my dad, he, he really likes guitar. Can he come over and hang out and look at your guitars? And I was like, well, yeah, sure. And as he comes over here and plugs in, and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> his fingers just started smoking. And so I come to find out he's a... Um, He's a fixture uh, on, uh, as a jazz musician and has a, a storied past of uh, other types of music, plays all kinds. Um, and, but most importantly, um, uh, maybe not most importantly, but uh, he's also a teacher. And with someone who is a teacher who has uh, quite a lot of years, <laughs> if I'll say that nice, right? <laughs> quite a lot of years of experience uh, it, with with the guitar, um, that's something that is important to to me to to uh, access. And uh, I think you know, I was talking to him last night, and I said, you know, he he, he said, I, I don't know, what, I don't know why anybody wants to hear what I have to say. And um, my comment to him was, was that um, you know, wisdom is acquired. That's the only way you can get it. Sage, sage wisdom and and experience can only be acquired through time. And so when you stumble across somebody who's been doing something that you have a passion for three times as long as you have, you listen and you ask lots of questions. So I said, hey, I'd love to have you on. Um, learn, love to hear about your, your guitar history, um, the gear that you've played, what influenced you, um, hear your, your uh, perspective as a teacher and give us some tips. So at the end of this, he's going to he's going to drop some some knowledge on us that we can move forward with as guitar players or enthusiasts and um, help us down the road. So we had some rocking out uh, tunes right before this I want to mention and that was on John's 68 right. Yeah. Fender Jazzmaster in triple Olympic white. So that's white headstock, white binding, and and factory white over factory sunburst. Oh my God! Brazilian uh, <laughs> rosewood uh, fingerboard too. It's just yeah. beautiful. With with the uh, the rectangle was that rectangle? Not the mother trapezoid. of toilet seat. We have mother <laughs> rectangle mother of toilet seat, and he has the original, yeah. never been taken off, yeah. uh, buckle guard. This big giant plastic piece that fit. I said, I told did you, you that. I, that? Did I you did. It's, yeah. it's I've been like, around. Yeah, I've been around guitars for at least thirty years of my life, and I've never seen one of those before. Yeah, ever until tonight. It's like a big plastic cap over the back, a see-through plastic. It's like yeah. it's like having plastic on your sofa. <laughs> it's true. It protects it, and yeah. you can wear those big belt, big belt right. buckles. In, right. And, and do you wear big belt buckles? Not often, but I, uh. you know, if, if I ever did, and, and back then I don't remember if I did, but I, you could, you didn't have to worry about scratching sure. the guitar. Yeah. yeah. In fact, Gretsch used to put a pad on them that snapped on. Uh huh. I I played it. it I think I, I mentioned that in one of the right. old podcasts. So my oh, old, wow. one of my old yeah. jet Gretsch's had it, and it snapped on with but, a, a Falcon yeah. or right. a Jet. It was the uh, it was the uh, Chet Atkins model. Yeah, okay. Doing some Chet oh, wow. Atkins, like, so just around. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw that. I th- I thought, <laughs> well, I was young, and I thought, oh wow, they must have they must have broken it and cut a <laughs> hole in the back, and this is the way they patched it up. <laughs> Boy, this is terrible. Why would they do that? Yeah. No, and it was Naga hide. It yeah, yeah, yeah. It snaps yeah. Naga hide. It, looked, it almost yeah. looks like a like a resonator it thing did, or yeah. something. So right. and if, very strange. That was a high end guitar. Yeah. So. Um, so, uh, anyway, so that was on a, on a gorgeous, gorgeous guitar with a neck that you guys would not believe. It was just like running your fingers over a stick of butter. It was beautiful. And then we also had a little bit from Jared's personal, uh, jewel, 
Yeah, my favorite guitar, it's a 62 Gibson SG, mm -hmm. and uh, it still has the Les Paul truss rod cover on it before Les Paul threw a fit and said, get that, get my name off of those guitars. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's, it's, it's my favorite guitar in the whole world. I'll never, ever get rid of it as long as I can help it. And that's got the uh, ebony block right, in the back, I was right? Gonna say, it's got the block, ebony block tailpiece on it. And it's I've never rare. seen that, and I've been around guitars. I was on, you know. That's, that was that was that was something I have not seen before. That's so bizarre. Yeah, yeah that's so. and it's cool. It's yeah. cool to see something you've never seen before yeah. for the first time. Yeah, when you thought you've seen it all. Yeah, there's always <laughs> something around the corner. Yeah, and that's what's exciting okay. about guitars. I love it. Yeah, it was. It's definitely exciting for me to. I oh man, I geek out on it. I love it. And two original cases too. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and mine's man. got the old case smell. This is the, the original show. Smell. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, onward and upward, everybody. Jared, what's new? Oh, man, I've been talking about the Gibson L6-S. And um, mm -hmm. today, or today, the other day, I decided on a color. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the past <laughs> week, I was thinking about it. Hold your, hold it, your pants, it's gonna be. It's going to be... It's going to be Speedboat Sparkle. <laughs> of course, you probably knew that, right? But it's going to be orange. I speed, love it. I love the fact that it's orange. Sparkle orange. Man. I love that it's orange. Yeah, really. I can't wait to see that thing when it's done. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure there's a couple collectors out here who are like just absolutely like clawing at their face right now. Just what are fact. you doing? Painting at that color? Yeah. Well, they they came mainly natural. Right. Yeah, that's right. Boring yeah. for that guitar, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. it's a thinner guitar. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's I, like it's like the width of an SG, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. yeah. If not thinner, it's real small. Yeah. But it uh, it's real light. It's um, it's maple, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, it looked like the when I got it, it looked like the person who had it last had a cat, and the cat's clawed yeah. at it. Yeah. So I I talked to the fellows that were working on it just the other day, and we were discussing color, and they said, "Yeah, man, that that came out really easy. We just." We already prepped it up, and it's in the yep. paint booth, ready yep. to go. Mm -hmm. I was pretty surprised because it uh, usually takes a little longer process, but eh, whatever, man. I'm I'm just thrilled about it. I went to see. Well, the, I'm thrilled uh, about it too. Yeah, yeah. the the pick guard guy about I'm it. I'm so, so Jer Jared has offered yeah. to give that away to our list because <laughs> it's orange. Well, you know, you can, you can always just have kidding. It sanded just kidding. Painted natural. So everybody understands. Jared is not giving that guitar away, <laughs> right? Just except maybe to me, but probably well, we're not. We're definitely gonna play it. I think. We'll yeah, we'll 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 meeting. definitely bring it in and and he'll play it. And oh, I'll bring it in. Yeah. Um. And now and that has the uh the the resin um what are they called like resin coated pickups. Yes, yes, yep. It uh, epoxy resin filled pickups. Yeah. They originally came with, and you know, I don't really so want. Imagine like one of those things, like when you see like a scorpion encased in resin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is a pickup encased in this. <laughs> yeah. So if it breaks or or whatever, you can't fix it. It's yeah. broken forever, and and you can't tear the thing apart to fix the the break inside. So I'm not going to build them that way. I'm going to build them to the same specification, but. Not gonna use that epoxy stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna uh, do my best to reverse engineer an original. You're gonna one. use asbestos, huh? My bestest. Now I've got a retainer <laughs> now because my front tooth, my crown broke, so I got this big full retainer up into the roof of my mouth just for my one front tooth. Yep. Yep. He's gonna take it out, everybody. There he is. Ta-da! I yep. had that for years, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's Same it's. Uh, and then you start lisping. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's um, temporary because I am going to get a implant. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I got one. I got both of my front teeth knocked out separately. I don't talk about fun times. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. Cool. So that's that's you're gonna keep keep giving us progress on that. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, John. So what's up? I was gonna ask you. Are you gonna are you gonna you, you know, pot the Pot the pickups? I am. Yeah, and wax. Are you going to pot the pickups and wax? And, uh, yes, okay. I am. That's, that's what I was hoping you would do that. This oh, way yeah. you can fix them. That's yeah, right. It's true. So what's good with me? Let's see. Okay, well, um, I'm currently I'm teaching guitar and violin, and uh, that takes most of my Saturdays. And uh, I don't even know if I'm playing tomorrow, but it could be. But I know the, the sound you have to How have. How many gigs do you do uh, uh, like a month, do you think? A month? Uh, 
It really depends on the month. In summer, in the spring, it slows down. And this time of year, it kicks in. You should get colds for parties and things like that. Yeah. I've played at Brookside Country Club here in town. Yeah. And, you know, in other restaurants and uh, yeah. just things like so that. So is that... Uh, we'll get into this and a little bit I later. Don't, I don't advertise because I'm teaching plus, you know... You're what? a busy man. Busy guy, and so. you got a real job. you got a big, you got a <laughs> yes. big boy job. Yes, i got a big boy job. Um, so. But that, that's an interesting thing yeah. that I maybe we can touch on after because I know you've yeah. been in a, a whole bunch of you know bands and mm-hmm. you know you've played all over the place and yeah. so like the difference between you know big stages versus like mm-hmm. you know hitting to hitting the restaurant yeah. you know like you know playing for several hours that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Well, we used to do about four hours before, yeah. before sets. And wow. things like that. Yeah. And that is hard, yeah. And, uh, and uh, I f- I'm feeling it lately. Not not years ago, but I am yeah. lately. It's about so 45 to 50 songs, if I'm not mistaken. Well, right? I, I have a book. Actually, I brought the book with me. It's six hours worth of music in it. Wow. And uh, we just read the charts, and we just run through them. And most of them are jazz favorites and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, oh, cool. Uh, um, so as for me, um, yeah. I... At the last show that Jared and I went to, um, I picked up a. I, I it's. I feel bad if I go to a guitar show and I don't buy something. <laughs> so you, I went to that guitar show too. So yeah, yeah, I went to that guitar show too. Yeah. You did? Yeah. yeah in June. Detroit. Oh, not in Detroit. Okay. Okay. Oh no 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 the Hilliard one. So we yeah, probably so, yeah. ran into. Yeah. yeah. So this one we just got. We went to the Detroit one yeah. and. Um, that was a really interesting experience. I'm we I met an awful lot of people. Kind of had a little bit of a. I shared Jared and I kind of co-opted a stand together. He he was selling his pickups and stuff, and I had all I had all the uh, guitar knob stuff out. And talked with an awful lot of people. So if you were at that show and you're listening, hello and welcome. I'm glad I met you. Um, and there was some there was some really cool gear. And there was some really funky gear. <laughs> Um, but I happened upon a tape, and I'm gonna kind of, I might feel a little bit bad about saying this because I, I happened upon a table, yeah. and there was a uh, a rat pedal sitting there, and I've I've always wanted one, and it was it was in really good shape, and it was sitting there with the box, and I happened to I picked it up and I turned it on the back, and I see this I see this little sticker that says Keeley Electronics, and I was like. And I looked, and it's got a little toggle on the top between filter and volume. I was like, "This has got a this has got a Keeley mod on it, and it's in it's in excellent shape. Mm-hmm. And these things are built like tanks, and the the the, the potentiometers on these are just I mean they're the kind that you just want to keep turning and turning because <laughs> they're nice and heavy. I mean the thing's heavy. I mean, yeah, if, but if you lock your keys in your car, screams quality. You lock your keys in your car, you could bust your window with that. Yeah, thing easily. <laughs> So uh, anyhow, I looked at the price tag and it says, it said sixty dollars firm. Mm. And I was like, Wait, what's wrong with it? <laughs> and I said, is that a Keeley mod on this? And he's like, well, geez, I don't know. And I said, I'll take it <laughs> <laughs> because that right there is you know another forty five bucks yeah, yeah. on top of the actual pedal price, mm-hmm. which is. <laughs> I saw two others there for ninety, mm-hmm. so yeah. I score. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. So that is um, uh, that was what I would maybe call a goal. And you know what? I borrowed that and I plugged that thing in today, and it's it just that mod makes a world of difference. It's, yeah, it it's does. Fantastic. I'll tell you what the mod is real quick for those who are going like, tell us about the mod, dude. There's Please. a little handy piece of paper. See, that's what I understand. There's a sticker in there. There's a sticker on the pedal. Mm-hmm. There's a piece of paper in here that says, this is a Keeley mod. And the guy selling it was like, I don't know. You know, the guy oh. probably had in his mind, well, somebody messed with it. It's probably not worth retail value now. I don't know. Well, yeah, that could be. So it's a it's a three-way toggle switch. Uh, uh, and um, the one of them is the classic rat sound. Yeah, classic rat sound. Uh, if, and that's to the right. If you switch it to the left, that is what's called a fat rat with a pH. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, normally, the rat has two diodes in circuit for clipping, but we add another in order to achieve a tube type tone. Mm-hmm. Volume is increased slightly, and there's an added richness to the signal. Fatter and more complex characteristics are present in this mode. 
If you switch it to the center, this is the Mighty Mouse mode. <laughs> Prepare for super volume output. We take a diode from the circuit, so this thing, we take out a diode from the circuit, so this thing is raging with volume. Great natural sounding gain, and then some. There's enough volume to boost any amp into true overdrive. I mean, how can I not buy this, right? right. You've got all these choices. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm super excited. I, I ran. I didn't run home. I drove Switch all the way to the right is my favorite. Yeah. I would see, that's interesting. I liked it kind of all the way to the left. Yeah. Oh, different flavors. Horses for courses. Right. As they say over across the pond. Um um, hello, UK users <laughs> um, and listeners. So, okay, so that was what I did. So I was really excited. I got I got myself a new pedal, and I've been playing with that, messing around with that. Oh, I'll do that the next one. I'll wait for next episode to tell the other thing. It's very exciting for me. What? What? You guys can't hear that, but I can because I have headphones on. Oh, we can hear it later? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyways, let, let's get on to our main topic. Um as I mentioned before, uh, we introduced uh, John, and um, it, uh, he's going to he's going to tell us a little bit about you know from whence he came, some about you know some of the gear he's got. I know he's got a couple great stories, and and he's got he is not afraid of talking. So if I cut in, I'm not being a jerk. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't go three hours. Okay. Um, and we got uh, we're gonna have loads of questions. Um, so John, yes. How old are you? I'm 63 years he's old. 63, and he's still rocking guitar. I love it. Okay. <laughs> um, the only reason I'm asking you that... That's okay. <laughs> ...is because that's, that is in, immediately going to give everybody who's like much, much younger to that a little bit of perspective yes. on why you're here and the stories you're going to tell. <laughs> okay? okay? So um, I'll prompt you with some questions. Okay. When did you first start playing guitar? I started playing guitar as a, probably, a, I would say, seventh seventh grade, like that. Seventh grade? Yeah, seventh what grade. What made you start? Well, here's what happened, is that uh, my parents decided we were going to have music lessons, so they picked the violin for me, and they picked the guitar for my brother. Mm. And uh, it all also coincided with the fact that we were in... Uh, you know, junior high, and you know, it's like sixth grade, and you know, whatever that, you know, sixth. Grade. So, uh, and then I like the cello, but you know, it didn't work uh, commuting in uh, New York City on subways and buses and things like that. We lived on Staten right. Island, so we had to take the bus. And if anybody knows Staten Island, New York, that's where we grew up. So, uh, we, we for school, we picked the violin, and uh, well, for some reason, my brother ended up with the guitar, but he didn't have to do the violin. So, uh, so I was playing the violin, and I was taking formal lessons, and uh, my brother was playing the guitar. And every time I complained about it, my mom would tell me, well, you know, you don't want to tell your brother this, but my brother knows now. But, uh, you know, you have talent for music, so we, we thought you should learn the violin. And, and the guitar is kind of a – and that was their perspective on it. So uh, – that so was pretty I, common back then, right? It, it was, know. yeah, back in 19 yeah. – whatever, it was 1966 or something like that. So um, – did Whatever. they have the violin at school? Did they have the orchestra? Yes, at, yes. At school, so yes, you played did. in that too, right? Right, and uh, we ended up uh, getting our own violin, like you can today. And yeah, you can get violins, and and I still play the violin. I teach violin, and uh, so what happened was uh, a very simple story of what happened was I was playing the violin, and my brother was playing the guitar, and he'd go out, and, you know, he'd be playing, and I'd be playing his guitar. And because I was taking violin lessons, and you should relate to this, Jared, I was able to apply what I learned onto the guitar, and I started reading his music. And even though one's tuned in fifths and one's tuned in thirds, mm -hmm. I was able to learn the fingerings for both and keep it going. So lo and behold, it's Christmas, and we're up on Christmas, right? And, of course, my parents, after spending all this money on lessons, decided they, you know, We'd like it to entertain the family. They're over. and uh, They wanted to see a they, return. They wanted to return. They, and they <laughs> thought I would play the violin and my brother would play at least chords on the guitar. And, and, and all my cousins would think that was great. But living in Staten Island, the violin wasn't really that hip. Okay, And I, I had some really beautiful cousins Okay, that were our age. So uh, my brother didn't want to play guitar. So 
I said, well, you know, let, let me play that guitar. He goes, you can't play guitar. And I said, what? Let me just see if I can. So I, I took his guitar and we uh, opened up his Christmas book and uh, we uh, played fairly well. I, and, and my cousins were impressed. My girl cousins, the, the guys, you know. Right, and that right. was my uh, first uh, sense of a good reason to play guitar, guys. You know, yeah. learn how because girls think it's cool. I mean, and, is there any other reason that yeah. started, anybody started? Well, yeah. well, actually, I mean, to play hard rock, your buddies think it's cool. Yeah. You see, when you start playing other stuff. You know. Okay, so what were you actually like? What were you playing? Well, at I was that point? I was playing an Italian guitar which had the name Douglas on the upper bout, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it, it was a good guitar, but it was it was truly a, a student's model back then. The fingers, you know, the strings were very high off the board. Like you would get at Sears or something. Right, right. exactly. You get this at Sears and, and things like that. And it was after that that my parents realized that I could play guitar and they were getting more results from me, so I was able to get another guitar. And we did our shopping. Hmm. We went to Sears and we looked at the silver tones and things like that. But then my father took me to Sam Ash in Brooklyn, which was the store to go. And we went in there, and we brought a Royal Artist Bruno. And it looked like a Gibson 335, and it was a blue burst. It's a really cool guitar. had the, the to to tortoise shell on the top, and it was red. and it was, it was really a sharp guitar. But the strings were high, and I learned a lot about guitars on that, like by lowering the strings, mm -hmm. adjusting. I mean, you really started this learning This is an electric about, guitar? Yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was, okay. looked like a 335. Ah. But it actually was a little bit like a Moserite because the pickup was actually oh, tilted. cocked. Oh, but that was, a, that was a huge thing. Like yeah, that, yeah. All of a sudden, everybody did that. Yeah, right. right. It was a, and, and if you ever played a Moserite guitar, they're not that great. you know. Like, well, it's, it, it's interesting you say that. Right, um, really? I yeah. actually ran into one yeah. of the guys from the Ventures. Really? That's good. At the last guitar show. And what happened? And he was and, saying the exact same thing. Yeah, they're just... Because <laughs> when I finally got my hands on a Moserite, I'm like, this is such a great guitar. And I picked it up and I said, this is not a great guitar. Right. But and, and, I, and I thought that the only way they have played these is that it must have really like taken him somewhere and had him worked on yeah like that, that so yeah. and then so. then it fell in the hands of johnny ramon yeah <laughs> the rest <laughs> of history yeah um okay so uh you 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 got that one you're saving up and then yeah. you wanted a 335 right yeah. why i just wanted a uh semi hollow body was it was someone influencing that at all uh, I think I was thinking of Ted Nugent, but I don't think he was playing out yet. Then maybe it's like you know, I remember him playing, but he was playing yeah. uh, the. Like, were you into the Beatles? Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, the Beatles. Yeah, right? I mean, so they, yeah, yeah. I was into the Beatles. Yes, I was listening to the Beatles. Sure. Yeah, Ted Nugent was the seventies, but uh, and he he uh, he wasn't playing. I, I got the guitar; it's in my head, but I, I don't remember the exact name of it. Yeah, it was a beautiful guitar, but um. But I was used to the Beatles, and you saw the British Invasion, and the Rickenbacker looked a lot like it. That guitar was that Royal Arts Bruno was a little bit everything. It had, yeah. you know, it was it was heavy, in a sense that it had a lot of binding. That yeah. the pickup was off angled, and it had it had a three thirty five and a Rickenbacker look at the same time. And the headstock was kind of like a. It looked like actually a most right the headstock. So uh -huh. I think they they, they But that was on, kind yeah. of like all the yeah. they all kind of had that right. uh, this sort of the uh, the yeah. the Gibson copy where they just kind of took a take on that it, a little yeah, bit. Right? They yeah. took a take on it and uh, so but it was a good guitar. I mean I learned a lot on it and yeah. uh it's, uh, but I was how, ready. How did you go about learning? Were you getting lessons at that time? No. I was I was actually using my brother's guitar lesson books. Uh -huh. And I was still taking violin lessons, so my brother was taking guitar, and then he dropped out. But the books so you're still learning. There. You're you're still you were still learning music theory. That's actually a lot harder to say than <laughs> music theory. <laughs> you were still learning. Yeah. You were still learning music theory. Try it, right. Jared. You were still learing music theory. Yes. Well, and how I are was you saying it learning. faster than I am? I, I was still learning music theory, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, well, actually, I took three years of violin lessons, and with that, there was a lot of theory. Yeah. But then I ended up at Dr. Trogan's uh, on Victory Boulevard, and uh, and he was actually a core. You played the piano and you did theory. Mm. And my father was a piano player, so he wanted me to play the piano, but I think I was intimidated. He was so good. He used to play out. And he was, I mean, but they always had the piano there, so you didn't have to cart it around. But mm -hmm. he was so good, I, I realized that. And I, I was never going to reach his 
his ability. Mm -hmm. And I should have started earlier with him mm -hmm. to be a piano player. But then I learned a lot about composition and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I went to Dr. Trogan's, and that was very, very good. And so mm -hmm. as, you're, as you're still continuing sort of your, I guess, mm -hmm. what would might be termed a classical learning, yeah. your love for guitar is growing. Right. And you're... Are you sleeping with the guitar at this point? You know? <laughs> it was in my room. And, <laughs> and uh, well, it was interesting because, like, we didn't get an amplifier. So what we did was we, we had a radio, and then we had uh, a TV or record player console. Uh -huh. so, mm. uh, it had a microphone input, didn't right, it? Right, right, it did. And yep. what happened is my father and I actually rewired a cable to I went from a, it was an RCA jack to the other kit jack right, and, and right. like an, I don't know what it was but we rewired it so I could plug the guitar in there and I had a good sound out of it yeah and then uh, well it probably was a little distorted right because it's smaller speakers and yeah but at least I was getting it I was able I had some tone right it was breaking like up that. and yeah. it was breaking up I was and I was getting a little dirt out of it it was yeah, great yeah. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so then uh, we ended up getting a silver tone amp. And that was used. I don't know if we we bartered. My brother and I bartered. My brother was playing guitar a little bit at that point, and uh, we we bartered and we bartered and bartered some of those mm -hmm. things. And see, it's a little hard to say. For any, yeah, for those that don't yeah. know what barter is, that just means trade. <laughs> yeah, we traded up and uh, traded in, and, and uh, but it had this. It was a big box with this little speaker in it. Did you remember yeah. that? Yeah. It, it was like it, it looked like a bandmaster, but it had. A, you know, a mini band, but it had this like ten inch speaker, and it just didn't hold up. Maybe it was like an eight. I don't know what it was, but wait, that broke up a lot. And then I remember getting speakers and cutting the a thing out, out for you. and uh, then using a jigsaw. So you take the screen out, and then use a jigsaw, and then you put mm. new speakers in. Yeah. I learned a lot about ohms at that point, and sure. you know how to match it up with the amp and things like that. And mm -hmm. We blew up. And then I remember getting a. This is really funny. You'll get a kick out of it. Those things you used to actually plug them into the the jack, and they were a box. Yeah. It was a small jack, about maybe three inches by four, mm -hmm. and it was a boost. And that's oh. what. And then you plugged your guitar into it, so you get that, that big muff sound out of right. it. Right. Yeah. And it lasted about twenty minutes, and it killed the amp. It just totally blew it <laughs> up. <And> it <laughs> See, there was no YouTube. <laughs> no, to, no, no, no. To look at to learn any of this it, stuff, yeah. so, so it was just you know right. trial by error. So you, you you did a lot of fooling around and trying to right. make. And then I remember my dad come home, and and I was I was back to the TV console. Looking mm -hmm. at it, and I was warned not to play it too loud. But you know, you went through these things, and you tried different things, and then you borrowed amps and things like that. One of my favorite amps was an amp similar to what we had. It was an Ampeg with a turned head, and a friend of mine played oh, yeah. the bass, yeah. and he brought it over, and, and that was. I mean, you can just super drive cool, anything. yeah. It had, yeah. Yeah. So John was referencing, um, and sorry, I failed yeah. to mention this. Uh, yeah. The amp that we were playing at the at the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, is is my uh, amp built by Dave Harris, uh, who we did an episode, one of our, I think, episode nine with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the uh, the two band factory, and that's the um, the fourteen watt, and that's out of a, uh, a carbon twin vintage thirty uh, cabinet uh, with rattlesnake cables, uh, yeah. input and speaker cable. Yeah. I think I've covered everything off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so so you're you are an you are an emerging guitar player. Mm -hmm. You are a seedling yeah. guitar player, yeah. And but with probably more skill than most of the people around you at this point. I would say so. Yeah. I mean, because uh, the way you learned songs was you you've played the forty fives, mm -hmm. and what you figured out. What I figured out was that when I played a guitar, is that I could never be in tune with the forty five, but the Victrola, the famous Victrola console. You were able to slow the the record down. Yeah, you were able to adjust it. So if you put a record on it, you can adjust it where it was a quarter step down and now, or a quarter step up. You know, and you uh -huh. actually needed to speed it up so you could speed it up and actually um, play along, play and along sound. with it, which was yeah. like great when I got my you know my yeah. ten years after album and I wanted to play like Alvin Lee and I, you know I was like. And the strings were too high on the guitar to do that, but then I had to adjust my strings. So uh -huh. uh, there was a lot of like finagling to get to where you wanted to go and to be, you know, you want to be a guitarist, you know. Yeah. And, you know, you listen to a guy like Charlie Christian, you're trying to get that sound and things like that. But uh, 
but like I remember listening to Alvin Lee and like I want to sound like him. What a such a fast guitarist. Yeah. Know? And uh, so and yeah. then what happens? So now so now you you've you've learned you you have the the you've got the guitar skills. You yeah. you're moving forward. Yet mm -hmm. at this point, I imagine you're probably going like, hey, I'm supposed to be in a band, right? Right. Well, I was playing out, and I was playing at different places, and I was doing a lot of hard rock. And my dad was basically a 30s, 40s player at auto piano. And he said to me, hey, John, will you, when are you going to stop playing that? You know yeah. that? You can say crap. It's okay. Crap. <laughs> when are you going to stop playing that crap? And I was like, what's the matter? And he said, you know, you want to earn a living and you want to make some money and you want to pay for college? He said, start paying society music. And he says, you know, society music, society, jazz, and jazz right. right? And, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, stuff that people like to hear, like, you know, <laughs> something I could pay for, you know, like that kind right, of thing. He was right. really letting me know that, you know, that, that kind of thing was going on. Um, was he a stern guy or was he open minded? He was in the or? Navy his whole life. Okay. Okay. Uh. And then when he, he left the Navy, he continued to work at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Okay. And he uh, was in the drafting room and he. Uh, so he's really open minded. Yeah, I would say he was, yeah. he was open minded for a guy from, you know, for, for a career Navy guy. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. yeah, yeah. WW2? Yeah. He did go to World War II. Okay. Yeah. He was in the Pacific and he's still alive. He, his wow. birthday. No kidding. Was November twenty eighth. He's ninety nine years old. Oh goodness! Wow. And my mom's ninety seven. Good for them. And uh, I'm going. I'm, we're planning to have a big party when he hits a hundred. So Holy I gotta, moly! I got to get back to New York. Well, next time you guys him. swing yeah. on, swing, yeah, I'd like to meet him. Yeah. Like to, okay. If, if, well, so, if you, if you ever bring him next door. Anyways. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. We're getting all yeah. personal. So okay. here we go. Um, so yeah. Back to but the bands. You're back playing to the hard bands. rock. Like, okay, who's influencing but, you now? But here's here's what happens. I was okay. looking for a Stratocaster, and I could not get a Stratocaster in all the Staten Island. In the stores, they were either overpriced, you couldn't find it, mm -hmm. and I was checking the newspapers. So I finally, I'm looking in the, the, the Staten Island advance, and I look at it, and someone's selling a Fender Jazzmaster. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what a Jazzmaster was, but it was a Fender. They wanted 150 bucks for it. I'm like I only had $75 saved. So uh, my dad takes me to see the guitar. And we look at it, and we uh, we lived in Great Hills, and we moved. We went down to uh, at the time, and we went to Dongan Hills, and this house was twice the size that this our is in house. New York. Yeah, this is the Staten Island, New Staten York, Island, right. and the house was beautiful. The, the kid is a senior in high school at New York High School, and and then next thing I know, you know, he's got a, he's got a '67 Mustang. You know, yeah. you know the you know the type of kid. Sure, right? He's sure. got the car. He's got the yeah. guitar. He's got, his name I was Chaz. In. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bradley. I know Chaz, but it's not yeah. the same Chaz. No. So I walk in, and there he's sitting there. Uh, uh, is a, a Gibson three three thirty five and a three fifty five mm -hmm. red. Wow. And he's selling the white Jazzmaster. Oh, that must have been a twist. <laughs> So I tried the Jazzmaster out on a Vibrolux amp. I was, mm. I'm thought I was in heaven. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. I said this is the great. Now the action was. I like high. the Vibra, I like yeah. the Vibrolux. Yeah, I own a Vibrolux yeah. now too. Yeah. I, I don't travel with it much because it's it's huge. It's yeah. it's heavy, but you know, but I played it through that. It was like a done deal, and I didn't have the money. So my dad got together with his dad, and they got it down to 125. And next thing I know, um, I gave my seventy five dollars, and my dad gave him the rest, and I, I paid my dad back. Thank you, Dad. I did. No, but wow. he he lent me the money, and he told yeah. me I'm lending you money. And he leans over and he says, "You know, that's what I earn in one week before taxes." Oh my goodness! Isn't that something? Wow. So that guitar at one hundred twenty five dollars was his weekly salary. That's a lot of money back then. Yeah. You know, so you think about that in perspective. Yeah. Right? I was like, wow. So. I think some more perspective is also that yeah. there was a point where you couldn't find a, a Stratocaster. Well, you can find it, but there are... Now, it's like yeah. millions of them. It's like you, you can't yeah. go anywhere without tripping over one. Well, we have piles you, of them at home. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, if you, if you walk into a music store and you look for a Strat, they, they come in and they're out. Yeah. I mean, I remember that there was, there was a couple of music stores in Staten Island, and you'd go in and the ask for they're out, and... You go to Sam Ash and they'd have one or two on the wall. This is post wall. Jimmy too. This right? is post yeah. Well, but yeah, that makes once, sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense of why yeah. CBS yeah. tried to, um, or I mean yeah. CBS. I'm sorry, Fender. Yeah. No longer or, or owned by CBS. I'm tripping on my words. I can't get this yeah. straight here, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
that's why they tried to up their uh, manufacturing number on those things and uh, the, mm-hmm. the quality in the manufacturing uh, process actually changed in the mid 70s probably due to the demand so it's, it it's well, making actually, a lot of sense before Jimi hendrix it was it was falling off people were going towards like the the gibson uh 335 mm-hmm. and if i remember right the gibson les paul that got to be very popular yeah sure. and uh I remember I always wanted a gold top, and I actually Me I too. did I did buy a gold top with mini humbuckers, and I was disappointed because of the mini humbuckers. Okay, yeah. didn't didn't have the drive. It sounded like the other, you know. Right. So, and I actually sold the Jazzmaster that one there. Then I for to buy the gold top, sold the gold top, and bought my guitar back. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so that, that that was pretty <laughs> wild, you know. Wow, good move. That, so. So you've owned and that twice. I've owned it twice. That's so I, amazing. I, it's like so that's not, I, you know when you pay for something twice. I mean, yeah. You know, so I bought, and uh, I remember finding the gold top. Like that's it. That's the. I mean, there were mini humbuckers, and it was a great guitar. The neck was like a baseball bat. Yeah. yeah at that right? point, they were pretty Flat, heavy. And yeah. I was used to that radius, and you know, it was like, and it was like like the SG. Remember, it had the flat, and then the the. You know, the the tunematic bridge was flat too, but it, right. you know, it didn't match the curve on the neck, and it just had a slight curve. So, uh, but uh, I ended up the Les Paul just didn't cut it, and it was it was a heavy son of a gun. It was yeah. it was heavy, and then, and the Jasmine is not light by any means, but no. at bet you it's two or three pounds lighter. And for a guitar, that's a lot when it's eight sure. pounds, ten pounds, you know, whatever it is. So I remember I sold the gold top and bought the Jazzmaster back from the guy who sold it. Wow, you know. So, so have have you done anything to that uh, to jazz the, master? Okay, right after I got it back, uh, the front pickup went dead on it, mm-hmm. and there was a guy named Larry Damasio, who was working out of a two car garage. He had a he had a red afro. He had a bit of big. I mean, he had a lot of hair, and he was kind of like almost like a psychedelic kind of guy. Or I don't know, but he, he had the little shop. You know, he had the VW van in front of the place, and I don't know if it was his, but it was always sitting there. Mm-hmm. And it, it was uh, it was on the southern end of t- of uh, Staten Island, mm-hmm. somewhere between Annandale and Tom. I can't remember exactly where it is now because it's been like forty years or something. He's still there. Get well, out! Actually, is he really? His you know? his company is still there, but yeah, I but think now he he's famous. In, and yeah, he's no out in Arizona now. I think he's re- probably my, retired. Yeah, but my pickup, well, he was a, he's about five years older than me, I'd say, five or mm-hmm. six years older than me, but uh, not more than that, though. But I remember taking my guitar there, and the pickup went dead. And I don't know what he did, but I got it back, and it was hotter than that. It was, it was like dr- playing a Les Paul. It just, and it was a single coil. It's like, a, you know, it's like a hot P90 or something. So I had to bring it back. I said, you got to balance these things. Because, like, now the, the bridge pickup. Yeah wasn't doing a thing i'm like you know it's like it was there it was nice but i could use it for rhythm but because it was the bridge pickup it was the wrong one it was too bright you know mm-hmm. so like so uh i ended up taking it uh he he uh was suddenly he was really getting popular after that and i was just using the front pickup for everything it was like you could do anything with it it was like you know mm-hmm. it screamed you can make mm-hmm. you can make it sound soft you can make you can do jazz you can do popular you know. So then I ended up taking it to a guy in the East Village who worked on it, and he balanced the pickups. And it's, it's, I'd say they're a little hotter than the original, but they are the original pickups, and they've been rewound. It was mm-hmm. delirried. You know, so, <laughs> well, not really. I mean, I, we kept, I mean, I, I, I wanted to, if to just to be together. So you, right. could, so the you volume wanted, and tone work sure. together. Yeah. So, um, but it's, uh, so you got an original, it's all Marzio original. hand-wired. Right pick up in there as well yeah on top of all of the other right things with that guitar right well but it's it's Jeez. the original pickup that he hand wired yeah and that's so that's it was pretty experiment you know he didn't he and i just think he put a few more rounds in it for me yeah. <laughs> is I that what me, you do to make him hotter you yeah that's wise? what you do i think he um, put a few more rounds on that thing so yeah. i've communicated a, with larry too yeah. under different circumstances but yeah yeah so oh, yeah. Uh, that's interesting so um but uh He's he ha- his pickups tend to sound a little sharp, in, yeah. in, in the things and I've I've leaned more towards the Seymour Duncan's in the last twenty years. Mm. Demarzio is known for yeah. uh, building the 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 hotter, thicker yeah. pickup and and he uh, mm-hmm. does get credit for innovating, yeah. um, you know the four wire lead and yeah and, and he was he was really had 
it was local. Hey, you got to take your guitar to this guy. He'll fix it. Right. So he was a local guy. It was like if you said J. Thomas Davis here, you know, he's a local mm -hmm. guy, or John Balzinius in in Columbus, and you know, he's a local guy, or or Phil Almeri at Fret Shop. I mean, it just right. He just he just local guys that did really good work, and uh, so that that kind of thing. And and then uh, Phil is really does incredible electrical work. If you you know him, he just kind of. He's pretty crazy, but uh, he's mm -hmm. done work for me before. But basically, when he worked on the guitar, the, the instructions were to keep it original, but make it work. And I, and I got more than I bargained for, you know, okay. quite frankly. So it was a, that's cool. So, I had a reverse engineer though, so you know. in case anything happens to him, I yeah. Don't, you know, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. You know how well, to fix it. If it goes out again, you talk to you okay, talk well, to Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're amateur. We have. I've never <laughs> had trouble with it after that. After it was balanced, it was fine. Yeah, and it it, it still has the original tone, and yeah. I just think it's a little has a little more punch to it. And you heard it, you guys. Were playing sure. It. Yeah. So sure. instead of going up to ten, it, it goes up to eleven. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like the old member the amps that had that the eleven <laughs> yeah. on the amp. Right. Yeah. yeah. But who did that? Was that Spinal Spender? Tap? Spinal, Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. Yeah. Right. I remember that the amp was yeah. like on the. So, uh, so yeah. you, okay. So now you, you're, you're into your, uh, you're into your jazz master, right. you're playing out, mm -hmm. you're playing some, you're playing hard rock. Mm -hmm. Um, and you are, you're in a couple bands. Right. Um, so how long does that go? Or tell, uh, tell me about when you, when you're in the bands and you're yeah. kind of going like, yeah, I'm a band guy now and I'm playing mm -hmm. hard rock. Yeah. And then what? I think the, uh, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. priming you. I know what the, you're thinking about. The, and yeah. then what is what a lot of us hit. Okay. Well, the then what was I wasn't being challenged. Mm -hmm. But the then what was interesting, too, because my father was right. He said, you play society music, you're going to make money, you're going to do stuff, you're going to pay for college. And quite frankly, he was right. I changed my venue. I started doing 50s music. I started doing the 30s and the 40s. I started playing a little bit with him. And the next thing I knew, I was, you know, I was making money. I was doing weddings, bar mitzvahs. I was wearing velvet jackets and bow ties. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the guys weren't that excited about my bold buddies, because, but I could still rank, you know, rock and roll with them. Yeah. But not but only did I have money, money in my pocket, but you, you started meeting some really nice girls. Like, sure. again, uh, the yeah. reward on the icing on the cake, they, you know, like, wow. Because they, they look, you, when you're wearing, and you're dressed up and you're wearing a suit, they think you're going somewhere, right. and you may not be going anywhere except home. I love that it's the perception. Guy. He's so classy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they talk like that in Staten Island. I know. They, they, they just that. Uh, so so uh, handsome. That, but if, uh, and it's it's interesting. You started like, well, you know, there's there's a lot to this. If you're going to make this a career, you may as well do that, right? Yeah. And so I was. Uh, I remember I was at, uh, and it's very interesting. I was I was playing some music, and. Uh, I was I was in a basement, and a guy had a guitar behind the bar, and he said, "I got an old guitar behind the bar." I said, "What would you buy it for?" And he said, "I don't know. I I only had like thirty bucks in my pocket, which was a lot of money back then for me to have in my pocket." Mm. So he pulls it out, and it's a Gibson ES one seventy five. It was he, we didn't know it, but it was in nineteen fifty three. Oh, holy! Wow. That's early. A single P ninety in it. That's really a single P90, and I'm playing the white jazz master. And I saw get I told him, I'll give you everything in my pocket. He goes, well, How much you got in your pocket? And I opened it, I had 30, 35 bucks, 30, 35 dollars. He says, I haven't played it, take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. I gave him 35 bucks for it. <laughs> Just ching. It even had a case, it had the original case with the pink interior. Yeah, but here's the, case, here's the yeah. thing. The arch top was crushed because the ribs let go. Oh, okay. So it was down a little bit. Right. And uh, I took it to Mandolin Brothers, and they took the top off and steamed the top wow. to the right spot. And I ended up putting $250 in that guitar. And when I got back, I had a beautiful 1953 Gibson ES-175 with a P90 pickup in it, played superb. Wow. I ended up not playing that guitar for a lot of years. I played that guitar from 1971 till about six years ago. I mean, that's, wow. like a, that's like a $5,000 guitar now. Did you have to get a refret? 
I mean, did you? It didn't need frets. It needed Nothing? the top steamed. And that was a ton of money. That was basically. I, I meant mean, throughout the period that you've had it because that's yeah. a long time. I mean, my dad had a 69 Gibson Dove. And right. I mean, the, the, the fret wear on that thing. Well, I played it. It it played out, and I and and I end, ended up trading it for a brand new Gibson L four, mm-hmm. and the guitar I loved it, but even my wife's looked at it because I can't believe you're getting rid of that guitar. And then a friend of mine, Tim uh, Tim Montgomery Senior, he was my horn player. He used to be play trumpet for me, and we get together, and he goes, "I can't believe you let that guitar go," and I said, "It's wall art now," and it really was. The neck Just was starting to go. You yeah. know, because I had the cutaway, and it was it was it was yeah. caving in. It and did its job for me. It years. did its job, yeah. and I always wanted an L five or an L four, and I tr- I literally it's a little sold bit bigger it. body, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And true. so I got thirty one hundred dollars out of it, and I got an L four. Nice. That's that's a good price back. When did you get rid of it? About eight years ago. I guess. Oh, okay. that's when the market ago. was pretty high. Yeah. yeah. So. So Good. and it was beautiful. It was still wow. beautiful. And then I saw a guy playing it. That's a sunburn. That's a, a sun. Sun, it's, sunburst, a, it's right? actually two tone. It's only it's tobacco. It's like brown and it brown was and there was no red in it. It was brown and black. Yeah, two like tone, a t- volume that's a, like a tone. tobacco, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 One P ninety in it, and uh, so wow. So that's pretty wild, you know. <laughs> so thirty five dollars. That's mental. <laughs> but you know, you run into something like that. But then I ended up paying two fifty for it. So you know, you think about it. For the re- restoration, yeah, but and I played it for twenty years, you know, yeah. So, wow. So what you but, you got an L four? You Gibson L four? Y- yeah. What is that? What what? I mean, I know what it is, but uh, yeah. You describe but now it. you're describe playing it. really. I mean, it's got a wonderful jazz sound and everything. The problem is, is that it fe- it fed you always got feedback. Yeah. And you had to you literally had to stuff your Pretty underwear thick body, in the right? holes and things like that. Because uh, what I realized is that the pickups were mounted on the top. And that was what created. The resonant, yeah. And I had two, and it was a beautiful guy. And when you put the 175 next, the new 175 next to the new L4, you looked at it, and they were the same car, guitar, except one had a, a plywood top. The 175 had a plywood top, and the L4 had a carved top. Mm-hmm. Well, that added to the problem. So I ended up uh, selling that at Mandolin Brothers and buying a Gibson 335. <laughs> and Came full circle back I went, to the 335. Right, I got a candy apple Gibson 335 <laughs> and a 56 Telecaster. Oh, man. So I, I, the, 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 the 53 Gibson turned into two really nice guitars. So you have an actual 1956? Style? No, it's a 1980 reissue 56 reissue. Custom Shop. Nice. Okay. And I'll tell you that, if you think that guitar plays, the other one. that one, I was playing that one yesterday teaching... And I was doing all venture stuff, and that's why yeah. I was fooling around with oh, the ventures. I, I mean, that's the venture guitar, yeah. you know. And I and I went through, uh, uh, what do you call it? I was going through the Prince, and I also the Vibrolux. You, you, but you're talking about the Jazzmaster at this right, point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, the I used the, 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 the Stratocaster when I was teaching uh-huh. just uh, the, two days ago. Okay. All the venture stuff. So. That the eight, the early '80s custom shopper issues. Those alone are yeah. pretty valuable, and, and I really love how they built those. Oh, the guitars they're are great cool. guitars. That yeah. they just did a fantastic job back mm-hmm. then. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a gorgeous guitar. And what's nice when I got it, it came with all the goodies. I mean, it came with a strap. It came. It Piece has a candy. three. It yep. has a three way switch, and it came with a five way in the box, what? and an ashtray. You know the ashtray cover? Yeah, yeah. I got the ashtray cover, the five way switch, but I never changed it. I said, I'm leaving the three way and I'm putting it in between. Mm-hmm. I'm right. You're jamming between in the, between the. Right. Because yeah. that was the right way to do it. And <laughs> it was like, and then so my student comes in and he's got, you know, one of these, we call it the Mexican Telecaster mm-hmm. uh, Stage Masters with the humbucker on the master. bottom. Oh, uh, the, oh uh, yeah. 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 It's a, modern. Uh, they're very good. I mean, they're very, very good guitars, but it, it doesn't it's have different. the sound. It's not and he's got a five-way switch, so I said, "Well, here, try this." And and then, and I showed him you have to put it in between the, uh-huh. the first and the second to get. And you're you're down by the bridge, and it just screams. Sure. But uh, that's a nice guitar. That's, yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of offers to buy that, and I have not sold it. It's then, just, uh, don't. You know, say it's got do the it. tweed case. I mean, it, everything oh, yeah. is. It keeps. It what came, color is it? It's it's the the two tone tobacco. Okay. So it's no red. It's just. It's a 56 copy or 56 reissue 1980. Okay. So it was like a anniversary model or something yeah. like that. So, and and then you got the 335, mm-hmm. which you 
had always wanted, and you right, finally got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah, and I play it out of Christmas because it's, it's it's fire end. It's Bright that, red, yeah, and it's got the bear it. claw in it and everything. That what year a, is that? That's a, I I believe that's a excuse me uh, that, that was a uh, like a ninety six. Okay. Like a ninety bear claw. Okay. Bear claw is the when you see the, like the vein the the radiance in the in the the wood. Okay. Flame, call that like bear flame. Claw, like the flame. It's okay. Called bear claw or okay. flame. And uh, nice. So uh, and it has the bear claw. Never on the heard front. that term, the bear claw. Well, cabinet guys use it. And, okay. And I work with a lot of guys doing stories and store fixtures, and you know they, oh, yeah, they call okay. it the bear claw. And, Interesting. But uh, yeah, so but it, now so, just to be clear, in the guitar yeah, world, yeah, that would be we we call that flame. Is that right. different than flame? No, it's the same. Same thing it's as flame. The same, okay. The same. Yeah. Thing. When you when you have your top and your yeah. Tilting it towards a light, and you right. see it change colors right. and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. If, if yeah. It, it like moves, it's it's well, a beautiful it, thing. So there's, yeah. I mean, there's a couple different things. There's a quilted right. top. There's a flame top. There's a bubble. Yeah. There's like right. All those different variants. Yeah. You know. Bird's eye maple. Yeah. Well, this um, is a bird's eye maple with the flame, and it's just nice. gorgeous. Oh and, wow. Uh, yeah, when I fell over that one. That was like, oh, I think I'll buy this. You know. So, so yeah. can I ask? Sure. Like, well, what what did that set you back? That sent me back um, about eighteen hundred dollars. That's it. That's not bad. Yeah, it was not bad at all. Was, I, I was, was getting was, ready for a, a, it was a huge. whopper. Right, but you're thinking of today's numbers. Yeah, you see? true. And also, and also, it was used. And, it, and it when was, it was used, but was it vintage? Uh, I I wouldn't call it vintage. Okay. I think it looks. It's it made. I mean, the binding is is deliberately yellowed and things okay. like that. But it's not. Heavy yellow. Yeah. It's okay. not 1956 vintage, but it is still kind of vintage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talking, see, about the three, talking about never, the 335. Any, right. The 335 and the 56 was just red and it was a maple top, somewhere like right. the table here. Yeah. But it, it didn't have any of the bear claw or the, or the, or the flaming right, things like right. that. That was something that was added plain in top. the 80s plain. and the 90s. Yeah. Actually, the 90s. That's what it. And I think they're making better guitars today. I mean, when I'm seeing it, and yeah. I'm comparing it, and because I've played the old guitars, yeah, and, and, and I've had them, and uh, went through a bunch of them. Uh, I have I had I had a '71 Martin D28, you know, and, and I sold that, and I, actually I traded that for a, a, a 19 2001. I traded it for a, a new Japanese D'Angelico. Oh, what hmm. a guitar that is! I mean, and uh, it's uh, acoustic yeah, that's or another arch story. top. What is that acoustic or arch top? That's an arch top, uh, okay. the Angelico New Yorker. Yeah. And uh, still, I mean, when I was in high school, I remember going down to Forty Eighth Street, and there was all these guitar stores, and you'd walk down the street. It was on Forty Eighth Street. It was like five stores, and it was Sam Ash, there was uh, Music Exchange, there was all these different stores, and they just had gorgeous guitars. And I walked in there, and I'm well, oh, I'm not junior in high school. How old are you? They had a uh, an original D'Angelico New Yorker on the wall, mm -hmm. and I asked to play it. And the guy looks at me. I'm a just a long haired kid from high school, cutting school. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so, you yeah. know, my cl my class my school's on 59th Street and Second Avenue. You know, I'm on 48th and, and like 60th. Like, like so, here I am, and uh, I don't know if I was cutting school, but I was with my two other buddies, and we, you know, he snuck out, and we, so but. Uh, so I pull, he I said you know I, I I don't know if I have the money but he he realized I was being really honest with him he let me play at it wow and it was like and you proved your salt he was like oh okay you can play yeah and then and he let me play it and and it was like what a guitar but it was so far out of my range it was like back then they were like eight hundred nine hundred dollars and mm. so um so what about it was yeah. you know when what? you say what a guitar yeah. I've never picked up a D'Angelico. I mean, I've seen them. Yeah. I've never mm. picked one up. Well, they make them now, but they're out of Japan, China. Yeah. And those are not bad guitars. They're really nice guitars, but they they don't have the essence of the original that that we talk about. That. Right. Uh, but in two thousand and one, if you went to the Nam show, mm -hmm. what they did is the there's uh, the company that did it, and it just escapes me the name, but um, they. Bought a sixty thousand or hundred thousand dollar D'Angelico here. They took it to Japan and knocked it off completely. Okay. And they brought five of them to the two thousand and one Nam show, mm -hmm. and and that was in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, those five guitars were sold at the show. Hmm. 
They were sold at the show. And one of them ended up in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. And the guy was going through a divorce. And we just started eBay and YouTube. And that's when it was on there. And you bought that one. And I bought that guitar. So you have one of the five original. Oh, my gosh. Right. Now, that guitar was interesting is that it's, if you look at the Mel Bay book, it's that guitar that's on the cover. No kidding. That, it's I that, always wanted that guitar. I always want. I mean, I stared <laughs> at it for years and years and years. Yeah, and I played too. one back in 1968 and 69. And then, so uh, when on my 50th birthday or something like that, I was like right around then. I uh, I went I, I went up to uh, Buffalo and we met at uh, one of the hotels up there, and I had a little mess of boogie amp. Sat it down. He showed up. I played it in the lobby. People were all gathered around us and. I gave him a check, and that was that. Wow. I gave him a, oh, a, a, a we call certified check. Sure. And I took it home. And wow. I, so uh, you've did, never seen that one. That's like I play no, that one all the time. No, I haven't. That's, uh, yeah. So I, I'm definitely an arch top guy now. Yeah. You know? And uh, so. Interesting. I know that you were talking about. Yeah. You were. You mentioned you were gonna. You were thinking about picking up this other one. Uh, I think one of the other times that you were over at the house. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Did wonder, you know what? I didn't pick up anything recently, but I know like, I, I'm always looking at stuff. Yeah. You know? I, like, you, I think you. it was a pretty high dollar yeah. investment you were talking about. What was it, Paul Reed Smith, PRS? No. I've been looking at those lately. That's the only one I have not owned. And uh, I, I've bought it a lot and, and bought and sold because that was the only way you'd know if you like it. Hey, that's how I know? do it. And I that's all I, I mean. I'll, do it. I've I've kept guitars as short as that. two weeks, and then like that's not for me. And I I'd lose like today if I lose fifty bucks on it or hundred bucks. Yeah. It I learned something, and I, I and I'll do better the next one. And yeah, I uh, that's that's just what it is. Yeah. You know? No, I so. I'm right there with you. I actually mm -hmm. created a started to create a diagram uh, <laughs> of like my purchases and trades. Yeah, and yeah. See how they've you know. They yeah. all came from one. Yeah. And now there's a big family of yeah, them. guitars. Yeah. And it's just, you know, on, on, I've got a couple where, like, I sold one. Yeah. Which gave me two. Yeah, right. That's which like, gave me that's the L4 a one did. better yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. The, you know, it's just, it's, I get such a kick out of that. And, you know, the, any, any of our listeners know, I yeah. say this all the time. Like, I'm on Craigslist. Yeah. At, at least an hour a day. Really? That's right. That's that's a it's, habit. That's a it's a habit. It, <laughs> so you know, it could be dangerous too. It, you know? it, well, yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, no, my there are certain family members that don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I, I got that too, but like you know, it, it, it's okay. It'll yeah. change. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we've given us some history on a, on the playing, yeah. and you are you know uh, you are at an uh, at an age where at some point yeah. you you figured out like, hey, I I'm not going to be playing out at rock music anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have this great knowledge of guitar. I love guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. What took you into the realm of like I should teach? Oh, that was years ago. Well, okay, here's a, that goes back to when I bought the Jazz Master and I was sixteen. Oh, what? What? Yes, when I what I figured out is because I had my brother's books, and I had I I owed my father like you know thirty five forty five dollars like easily right yeah. you know so like so I said I got to pay my dad back and you know we made a deal and. I when I I grew up, if you made a deal and you shook hands on sure. it, I mean I shook hands with my dad and then I shook hands with the guy who sold us the guitar. So then, uh, what I did is I started teaching the kids next door and the neighbors' kids guitars. Okay. Mm. And they wanted to play. I said, "Well, I can teach you how to play." So, so I uh, started teaching them guitar. And then next thing, by word of mouth, I got another student and another one, and people were bringing the kids over. I paid my dad back. I bought a Bandmaster amplifier. Mm. I bought a custom. I built a stack with horns and everything. It wasn't a Marshall, but it was dang loud. And mm -hmm. so I, I started teaching the kids guitars. And uh, next thing I knew, I had, like I said, I had the Bandmaster, and I, uh, and I built a stack. And if the students played really well, I let them play through the Monster. You see? Right. And they would come back because that was like the coolest thing. <laughs> and then... Uh, then uh, when I hit 18, I was I, I got a driver's license. And then I realized that the piano teachers always came to your house if you didn't go to the piano studio. So 
then I started charging to go to a person's house like a piano teacher. So you not only made the money teaching the lesson, you made the money by you you traveled to their house, their house and you were able to organize it. So you, when I wasn't at college, I was able to you know have so many students on like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, no kidding. and things like that. So I I paid my college playing guitar. See now teaching. I don't know why I just assumed yeah. that you. Did, decided to do that later on in life. I, I did do it I later on. I wonder why again, that though. assumption is though. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Yeah. So that's when I when I did that. But uh, okay. what what's interesting is that you know you grow up and things change. And I was playing out. I was playing in clubs and things like that. You've and then what I've learned though is to teach. You need at least nine students to keep you on your game. You need that's the that's the cutoff. You if you have less than nine students a week. And if you're not practicing those other, you know, hours, so to speak, uh, you really are not on your game. You have to put in, you know, nine hours a week, you know, something like that. And this is coming know. from a lifelong right. player with a lot of talent, yeah. everybody. Yeah. So practice. It's practice. 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 <laughs> and there's, there's nothing like going over the fundamentals with a student and getting you paid for it, and that's your practice time. Right. And it was almost a selfish thing. Is I, I taught because, first, because I needed to pay my dad back. But then I realized I had cash in my pocket. I started playing out society bands, and I started doing that. And the I paid for college, and and uh, you know did architectural engineering and things like that, and mm -hmm. design work, and uh, you know teaching, and and I got a teaching degree. And mm -hmm. uh, but it was like when you started going through all that, you realized that you can build on what you know. Mm -hmm. And the key to teaching is you just got to be ahead of the student by one lesson. <laughs> I mean, I had some pretty good lessons. And I've had students that really pushed me because, like, I knew they were coming back next week, and I didn't have what I was teaching them. But I had it well enough to show them how to do it, and they'd leave, and i go, oh, i gotta, I got I to gotta work on that. Yeah. I have students right now where I'm teaching them how to read second and third position on a guitar. And you just don't play in third position unless you're playing lead you're not you're not thinking down there you yeah. see but if you're reading you i know, definitely sick, do not think down there you know but <laughs> yeah so um so you, you have to apply that so uh but then i i moved to columbus with american electric power because i was in a mechanical design yeah. division and uh, I, I think the interesting story on that is here i am i'm 26 years old i'm in columbus ohio i'm a guitar player and i know no one mm. So, yeah, well, me too. That's how that's what happened when I got here. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's right. You came from California. Same thing. Yeah. So I did what I did in New York. I went to all the guitar shops, and I, you know, met the guys down at uh, there. Was that uh, it's it's High Street South? Yep. They, yep. Was that? Group, it was like Groovy Dogger. They get together on Saturday mornings and yeah, play, yeah. and you know yeah. that kind of all country music mm -hmm. and things like that. It wasn't my thing, but it was good. I really enjoyed it. I love the company, and then I ended up on campus. At a at a store called a String Shop. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember the String Shop? I mean, that was I probably wasn't after you. It was right next to the Agora, which is now the we call a film. We call a, it's not the Agora anymore. It's called something else. Um, With the rock, right, right, right. It's on Seventeenth Street, Seventeenth and High. So, is it, what is it? Newport. Newport. It's the okay. Newport, Newport now. Hey. Okay. You know it's a new port. Yeah, yeah. I knew it oh, as the Agora. A that's I mean, a fantastic place. You know? I mean, I moved here so, like ten years ago. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Todd Runger was showing up there. You know, and I knew him. I mean, like <laughs> from you, you knew Todd Runger. Just we we met. You know. Okay. You know, how, not, how did how did you run into him? Oh, it's, he was playing with someone that I knew was in his band. Okay. And then he came to the Agora, and I, you know, said hello, and it was right. that, you know, it's like. You know, it's, he wasn't even hanging around. He was like, so it was just that kind of thing. Interesting. But it's like you're running to He's people. a character. Yeah, yeah he is. <laughs> so I mean, from from what I've seen, yeah, I, so, I don't know him. But. He was a, I think he was from Detroit, wasn't he? I think he, I think he was from Detroit area. But uh, someone from Staten Island was in his band. and I, Yeah. Uh, Chasm Sultan was the guy's name. was huh. his bassist. And I, you know, said hello to him and that kind of stuff. But... Uh, well, but, uh, so, so you got your you got yeah. your students that you're keeping you busy right. all the time now. You're yeah. you're playing out yeah. regularly. I think. Yeah. I, I mean, I w mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody, but yeah. I hope I have. I'm still active. 
playing, uh, and I don't mean as, as an age, like, I hope I'm still active when I'm old. But <laughs> Hold on, let me get my, my, my candy. Hold on. <laughs> um, it's next to my guitar. But oh. I, mean, I mean being plugged, you know, figuratively plugged in mm-hmm. in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think a lot of us get into, you know, we go like, ah, yeah, I got stuff. Now I'm in a rock band. Mm-hmm. And then the, then what happens? Yeah. Or you move and you lose, you're yeah. completely, when I moved from California to Minnesota, yeah. I was, com- I was out right. of it for five, almost five years. Yeah. It was brutal. Cause I yeah. come from a very rich music scene yeah. in Orange County, California. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then come out here. This is incredibly rich music scene here. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was very lucky. And I just had to start putting myself out there. But once I get past, you know, like I can only do the punk stuff. For, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's some pretty old punkers and stuff out there too. But <laughs> I, I mean, it's just it 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 struck me when when we met. I was like, wait a minute, this guy's this guy's way more. He's doing more guitar stuff than I am, and that was intriguing to me. From like, okay, so what paths you know does one take to get there and to mm-hmm. stay on top of the game? Which brings me to, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna have to, you know, start pulling things together here. Yeah. Um, I asked you earlier, I said, mm-hmm. you know, you have a ton of experience. Mm-hmm. You've played just about every kind of, you know, guitar, guitar brand. We've, we've talked about Disco. many. The what? <laughs> Disco. Disco. <laughs> Disco made money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, mm-hmm. You know, when you came over to my house the first time, like I just wanted to start asking you a million questions, but I mm-hmm. knew that that would have been incredibly rude, and I just wanted to listen to you play. Quite honestly, yeah. Um, so I asked you to kind of give us two things: mm-hmm. a like a couple of tips mm-hmm. uh, uh, for like if you're gonna play, mm-hmm. these are the these are the things you gotta know. Like, mm-hmm. get these things down. And, and some of this could be general knowledge for a lot mm-hmm. of people, but yeah. I felt like it was worth asking. And the other thing was, um, what are a couple things that you, as a constant student, mm-hmm. hopefully we are all constant students, not only in guitar, but in life. You know, I think it's really important. I am, I'm very, very aware of that. Yeah. Um, and I'm a, I'm a bad student, <laughs> bad guitar <laughs> student, because yeah. I get stuck playing like, oh, this, I like playing this. I want to play this. I want to mm-hmm. play this, right? And you get stuck, and it's hard. It's hard to discipline yourself to to to, mm-hmm. to push yourself out of that. So, what are a couple things that you got to know mm-hmm. for sure? Just okay. for those anybody who's starting out or anybody repicking up, and then what are a couple things yeah. that to be the best guitar student that you can on your own to do okay well a first answer on that is i would learn how to read music reading music and understanding chords and chord constructions one of the things that i teach is i do not teach a person to memorize a chord i teach them how to find the sixth tone in other words if you're playing a g6 or a c6 you're going to find the sixth tone if you're playing uh, if I tell you, you got to play the ninth, you know, you know, what is the ninth tone? And I like to teach them chord constructions. And if you understand the constructions in the two bar chord positions, which are the two main ones, there's a lot of them. There's at least five. But if you, in the first, which you're following the E string and the A string, I would first, you know, learn the chords, learn where the notes are, you know, and then from learning the notes, Learn the construction. So if you see a B flat minus seven flat five, you can do you can do your minor, you can add the seventh, and you can and you can add your flat at fifth. You see, and that's it's that kind of thing. And then you'll start memorizing those constructions because you'll see those things coming up a lot as the music as you're working with it. So there's nothing. Uh, one of the things I do with my students, I get them to read something fairly hard, quickly. So that they don't get intimidated by sheet music. Mm-hmm. Now that is intimidating. It is, and 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 I don't like to teach tablature until the second year or the third year with a student because if you start a student on tablature, you'll never learn how to read the staff mm-hmm. of the real music. Mm-hmm. So in that way, I'm I'm, I'm you know a, a formal player, and that mm-hmm. because you if you learn how to read and then you can you can build that. So you learn how to read, you understand the chord constructions, 
The next thing is understanding the circle of fifths and how it relates to the different you know chords. And we can have a whole lesson on how the circle of fifth works and knowing your sharps and the flats and you know, yep. you know things like that and how they relate. And then uh, the biggest secret, and I'm going to give you a little secret, okay? Yay. The G seventh, the seventh chord is your doorway chord. Okay. How do you mean? Okay. When you see a seventh chord, mm -hmm. let's say you're coming along and you see a seventh chord, and then you see like this suddenly all these accidentals. That told you that the key just changed. You see, a lot of people don't get that. They'll say, oh, gosh, it's, it's the chord's simple, but I got old. Now it's changing, you know, and things mm -hmm. like that. Well, every measure respects a key. And people don't realize every measure respects a key. It may not be the key you started with, mm -hmm. but it respects the key that it's in. And that's, of course, this isn't, we can go into an extended theory lesson on this. Uh, but so answering your first question, read chords, chord construction, circle of fifths, and then understand what each chord, like, like the, the seventh chord being the doorway into a key mm -hmm. when you're changing keys and things like that. Uh, that's the first question. Uh, the second that was the first answer. The second one, to improve, is that is that was basically what what I want to be a student on next, or how I would improve myself. I can't yeah, I think I please. think as you, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there are certain things where like, hey, fundamentally, do mm -hmm. these things. Right. But as you, uh, even if you have those fundamentals down, right? Because yeah. I, I I know that there are people who are like, mm -hmm. that was all completely Greek to me. Right. Or I That's don't okay. know what the heck he just said. And there's also a lot of people out there going like, amen, brother, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So mm -hmm. beyond that, mm -hmm. as someone who is uh, just keeping up, uh, you know, your dailies or, or mm -hmm. looking for new ways to to improve, um, mm -hmm. what are a couple tips that you have that you might give to students who mm -hmm. are maybe... Um, just looking to stay fresh. How yeah. do you stay fresh? How do I stay fresh? Well, the way I stay fresh is I teach guitar. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I force myself to practice. But here's the thing is, even at my age, I'm 63, and you asked me that before, I don't want to practice. I'll tell you, when I come home from my you know day job and I'm doing engineering work and I come home and I sit down and it's 6.30 and I had dinner, I, I just want to do nothing. I mean, other people do that, right? <laughs> yeah. And I love guitar. So, but if I have, if I go to the studio and I teach, that forces me to stay on my game. Okay. So that's the the first thing that I would I do. I deliberately schedule students on a selfish level, but I, I but there are also a lot of like now my students are going to Iowa State. They're in this you know, in the school of jazz. They're starting their own groups. I'm going to hear them. You know, when I go out, I don't. And I don't hear, you know, mm -hmm. at the church that we go to, a lot of the people that play in the, the youth band took lessons from me or are taking lessons. And mm -hmm. it's good. I mean, it's just yeah. very rewarding to see that. And you know you're contributing to their life. So I'm so, going to, let me touch something real quick. You sure. just said you hate to practice. Yeah. And I think that is, for me personally, mm -hmm. always been... Like, cause I started mm -hmm. in violin when, I, like, when I was a kid oh, too. Was that a nightmare? It was awful. <laughs> it was awful because I'm so an ear player. Violin, like, yeah. and all I wanted to do was I heard Rocky, the, you know, the the commercials, and I would just sit there and copy the commercials. Right. So, right. but I couldn't play "Mary Had a Little Lamb" by reading it. Yeah. But I could I could play the theme to Rocky. <clears throat> yeah. By ear. Mm -hmm. And so when when the idea of like I got to go practice. And that's when you fall into the trap of going into the familiar, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So when you say, mm -hmm. like, let's say you're not, you don't, you're not teaching, you don't have a student. Mm -hmm. What's a what is a good way to get out of that rut, or or to, or to get okay. over that hurdle? Well, here's here's what I do, and it works really well. First of all, uh, I don't remember a lot of stuff. I read a lot of charts now. It's mm -hmm. so like when I was playing the guitar, and I was just sitting there. I, I play like five songs, you know, twice. But if I pulled my book out, there's six hours worth of music. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, I could play that. I, I forgot that I knew that one, mm -hmm. you know. So the way you get out of the rut is to have sheet music, even if it's just words and chords and you're changing the song. I mean, mm -hmm. so in other words, you're not playing the stuff that you're familiar with. Right. You're forcing yourself to, to open up. Yeah. Even if you're reading tablature or, or regular scores or... Whatever you're doing, force yourself with with an agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Yeah. 
that's stuff to carry with us and moving forward. Um, okay, we're going to get to our uh, top four. Yeah. And so our top four today, our top four, is technique we would most like to improve on. <laughs> now, interest, this is kind of hilarious because we have yeah. somebody who's extremely skilled, extremely knowledgeable, and um, practiced and experienced. Um, someone who is pretty skilled, pretty... Jared, you're pretty. You're a good player, man. I'm okay. You're good. I can blend in. And then with you got a hack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Jared, let's go to you. You know, honestly, I mentioned this uh, before uh, when I was talking earlier with John. Is that I I like the pentatonic scale when I do leads, and I just need to. Break out of the same habits, playing the same runs up and down the fretboard. I I got to get out of the box. Mm -hmm. You know that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do. And mm -hmm. and I've done that before by picking new uh, solos out of classic songs that I've heard a million times, and just taking the time to learn those solos inside and out perfectly. And I need to do that more often because mm -hmm. every time I do that and, and learn a new solo. I learned a new skill. The way you do that is you listen to Charlie Christian, okay? And he played with Duke Ellington, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he he actually followed the horn players to learn how to play his leads. Oh, interesting. And I, I didn't know he played with I mean, I, yeah. I know Charlie Christian because of the pickup that was named after Charlie <laughs> Christian. I mean. Well, you're not going to get a lot of stuff from him, but if, right. if you look up, you look him up, and you'll you'll see you know Charlie Christian you'll, you'll see the, but he he played like a horn player. Interesting. And it was a clean. I know sound. what you mean. It, you know I'm I am going to take a listen to him. You see, and it, there's only about one or two albums out there because he died at 25. I mean you know. Oh dear. And so uh, and he, he actually died in Staten Island. Did you know that? No. He died in Staten Island. Mm. It's the Island Hospital or something like that. But he was I mean I was I wasn't even born yet. You know it was oh. like 1940 something. 53. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, try and so um what I would want to work on personally is I want to, I like I need to work again on my scales. I noticed that if I'm not practicing my scales, you know, where you're doing your, your major scale, your Dorian note scale, your Ferrigian scale, you do, you just go through them where you're starting with the next note and you're walking it through. You got to get used to those tonal qualities. And those tonal qualities give you uh, the ability to, oh, I can hear that. And like they say, what's a melody if it doesn't have a Dorian scale? It's true. You know, and it... So Did you're they say that in like an old-timey voice, like, what's a melody if it doesn't have a Dorian scale? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's, you know, it's you're starting on the second note of a scale, and you're ending yeah. on the second note. Well, that <laughs> gives you a whole different tonal quality, you see? And that's where you, a lot of great melodies came out of starting the, the song with the second tone of the scale. So you started... An example, you started with a C chord, but it actually started on a D note, you mm -hmm. see? And so that, it's very simple. I'm simplifying it. But then from that, then you you know, you know do your arpeggio steps up from that, and then suddenly you've got this gorgeous melody, but you're still in the key of C, mm -hmm. you see? And one of the things that I, I find when I'm sitting down with students, I try to explain them that an A minor chord is a, chord is a relative minor to the C. Well, if you're doing your pentatonics, you know it's... A minor pentatonic in the key is C, unless you're doing like three chords in this rock and roll. But like if it's in everything else, you're going to use that pentatonic scale, uh, you know, in in A minor. But then if you use it as a chromatic, it's beautiful. The best way to do that is have someone play an A minor chord while you play a C chord and then reverse it. Mm. And it has an orchestral sound. It's full, fills the whole room. Mm. You can do that with G and E minor. You can do it F and D minor. You see, so there's your relative minors, and uh, the relative minors are they're good. They're good relatives to have, and uh, just <laughs> <laughs> so so you start understanding your theory, and it, it all works together. So, and in teaching, that's how that I got to brush up on my theory. I don't think yeah. I've ever learned it. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I got to get some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, honestly, I do. I need a theory it, pedal. So, That's what yeah. I need. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. But, yeah. um, let's see. I would just, I, I want to be more articulate with, I, I want my fingers to be more articulate mm. because I, I enjoy playing rhythm mostly. Mm. And so, like we talked earlier, I was like, man, you know, I really like, um, uh, I like the idea of playing gypsy jazz or, or mm -hmm. you know, jazz chords. I, I l really love listening to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have the occasion to actually play them out. I'm mm -hmm. doing other things that don't require that. Mm -hmm. But as a as a player practicing at home, I, I very much would like to do that. And that is a lot of those things are foreign to what my fingers want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would like to uh, have better articulation um, just moving across the board. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that requires practice, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is why I, he's rolling. He's, he's ready. <laughs> he's like, you got to practice, sonny boy. Yeah. Just yeah. get a couple of guitar students. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Start with your daughter. She's like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to learn guitar today. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. I'm, yeah. I'm trying. It's hard to teach your kids. My own two sons did not gravitate to... You know, um, yeah. but my, my, uh, you know, we have kids, we have, you know, people married into the family, they're like right in it, you know, they're yeah. playing, they'll, they'll take yeah. lessons. But yeah. when they're blood relative, it's really. Mm. My dad taught me you know, one lesson. He taught me yeah. D, A, and yeah. E. Yeah. From then on, and maybe G, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the so first and only any lesson he already gave me. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I yeah. mean, yeah. Well, cool, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, yeah. wrap this one. Mm -hmm. Um, and John, we really appreciate you coming by. Oh, you were all worried that you didn't. We're gonna have a talk enough to talk about, and I, we're pushing quite a long time on this. Oh, okay, one. it was a pleasure. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, really it was great. awesome. I I hope everyone who's listening uh, appreciated it as much as we did. Um, you know, it, sometimes it's it's strange hearing from somebody that isn't either familiar or famous, um, uh, and. Uh, you know, it's also not super often that you get to talk to somebody that has as much knowledge and history in uh, this thing that we love called guitar. So very much appreciated. Thanks very much. Thank and you. what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit us at our website at theguitarknobs.com for episodes, news, and guest profiles. You can get all social with us on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs. Give us a tweet at guitar underscore knobs. And check out our gallery on Instagram at guitar knobs. No spaces on that one.